Well, hello, friends. Um, today, we are going to work on the process manager again, just like yesterday. Um, and today, we're, I guess we're going to continue with this thing we started yesterday. So uh, we added these cool stacks here. And we are just going to make something more. So I was thinking we could do memory maps. So like every process has its own little memory map, right? Um, and if we pick, uh, what do we do? Sort by PID, maybe pick the um, terminal, I guess, number 10. And we can see that if we look here, we can see um, that these are all these um, different memory regions in the terminal process. And it would be cool if we could show that in here in like a little dedicated um, tab. Now, um, this format here is like very user readable, right? But it's not <clears throat> very machine parse friendly. So I think we should convert it to JSON as a first step. And then we can add something to the UI to display that JSON. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start with progfs, what was it called? Progfs pid vm. Right. So this is where we generate that file in the proc file system. Um, now, this is not, this is not the best format, obviously. Um, so we're instead gonna make a JSON object. Mm, I guess we'll just make one, um, maybe it should be an array actually. Yeah, it should be an array. Um, then we'll say for each region in this process, we'll create an object. Um, I guess we'll call it region object. Um, oh, and then we can do this a bit differently. So region object set readable. Writable region is writable. Takes care of those. And then what else do we have? The virtual address. Um, I guess it's the base address of the region. We'll call it base. Or we can call it address, actually. It's fine. Yeah, this is fine. Um, it's the virtual address dot get. Yep. And then we need the size. And I guess we can do these like amount resident. Um, what do we call that? Amount, yeah, amount virtual, amount resident. <clears throat> we'll call it amount resident. So the amount resident is how much of this region is actually um, in physical pages. So like you can allocate a gigabyte of memory, right? But you're just getting virtual memory. Um, so the amount resident is how much of that total um, region size is actually physical memory. Um, and then finally the name. Region.name. I think that's basically what we need. And then we'll do array dot append move reach an object and then we'll return we don't need the builder um, we can just return array dot serialized dot two byte buffer Um, okay, so let's just see what this looks like if we look at it in the file system. Um, so that would be, I mean, we can just cat proc 7vm. 
Well, that didn't go well at all. And we died because why? Okay, I have no idea why this would give us trouble, so let's do a full build. Um, we wanted to do this elsewhere. Rock. Okay, is there something particular about seven? No. Okay, so, well, this is what, what this JSON will look like, basically. Which I think looks pretty cool. And... Yeah, that's going to be very parser-friendly. All right, so let's see. I don't think we have any um, tools that depend on this. No. So we can just, um, I was thinking like if we had some tool that was already parsing this, then, then we would sort of want to um, update that tool. But <clears throat> we can just do this without too much worry. So convert, proc, uh, vid. VM um, to chase on. Ah. Freaking summer allergies, Jesus. Okay. Um, then we want to um, go in the process manager and we'll create a new class. We'll call it Process memory map widget. It's pretty cool. So memory map widget. Okay. And we are going to inherit from libguigi widget, I think. Just a simple one. Process memory map widget. It's a final G widget. Public. Yeah. Um, and I guess we can just start with that. Shit, that's not the right file. Process memory map widget. So what are we gonna put in here? We're we gonna put um I think a table view. So yeah, we'll make a layout. on that layout just because it'll look nice and then we'll make a table view um, actually let's do it this way this and I'll add this here model for it yet, but we'll make one soon. First we're just gonna we're just gonna add it as a tab here. So I think we'll put it before the stacks. Um, just basically just because it's we're gonna be testing this now so we want it to show up uh, right on startup. Memory map widget 
this is memory map widget. We'll call it memory map widget. And of course, we have to include it also here. So. Good, we'll call it memory map like that. Okay. Uh, oh, and let's edit system server and start ourselves a process manager by default instead of a terminal. Instead of a launcher, actually, so we can be a little cheap here. Um, Add it to the Megfa. I've been learning about CMake recently at work and um, at home. I'm starting to wonder if I should uh, or if we should use uh, CMake instead for the build system here because uh, these custom make files are really kind of a um, pain to maintain. And I'm seeing a lot of interesting benefits with CMake, but I'm not quite sure yet. Just something I've been thinking about. Build systems are not super terribly exciting, but they do make life a lot nicer when they are uh, working well. So it's worth investing some time in. All right, so here we have the unexciting memory map and the stacks are here. So now we just want to actually show something. So, um, oh, well, well, before we do that, actually, let's, let's add a set pid. Here, when we get a, when the selected process changes, we can tell the memory map widget to set pid pid. This is a little ugly, but it's fine. Um, and in that function, pid pid, if m pid is pid, return m pid is pid. Um, and then I guess in table view, we're going to want to make a model. Let's just start making a model, actually. So, um, main process manager, process memory map model. Okay. And for G model, what I usually do when I make a new model is I just uh, I just copy out um, these guys here because I know that I have to implement the, um, the pure virtuals. The rest, usually the rest you can avoid. Oh, damn it, um, what am I trying to do? Refresh. Yeah. Memory map model, okay. The GUI G model public uh, can just do that. Mm. Okay. And then we can get rid of most of these. Da, 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 da. Don't need editing support. Um Maybe we want to implement some of these guys. So row count and these, yeah, we definitely want to implement them. Okay, so I'm, what I'm thinking is we're just going to slurp up that JSON and then we'll keep the JSON here internally. Let's say uh, JSON array M uh, process data or M process VM, we can call it. Okay, and then these are going to be override, override, column name. Yeah, row name we don't need to override, but column name definitely. Oops. Override. OK, 
Okay, and then let's define some columns also. So column, wait, is that how we usually do this? Enum class column? No, we just do enum column, okay. Um, we do, I already forget what's in the thing. <laughs> Um, proc fs bid vm. What did we put in there? Put the name, I guess? Or no, let's put the address first. Address, size, um, readable, writable, um, amount resident, or just resident, I guess we can call it. Or no, let's call it amount resident. And name. We can start with these. Column count. I think I usually do that one. No, is that not how I do that? Okay, how, how the hell do I do when we do this? Column. Oh, count. Okay, yeah. This is kind of a handy trick just to give you the number of valid values in the enum. And you can use this to know how many there are. Nice little trick. Um, okay. And then, oh yeah, and we'll up, override update. So that's the thing that we should call from process memory map widget um, update. Right. Uh, okay. And then, Memory map map model CPP, right? Process memory map model um, Well, actually, I guess we don't need to do anything fancy in those Update, that's interesting And what else did we have? Int process Go count. Let's return and process VM size. The column count. Column count we can do up here. So uh, column count. It's that nice trick in action. And then column name. I guess we can do down here. So let's see. Um, switch column and we just do these string kind of wish the language would do this for you don't you Maybe in C plus plus seventy six we'll get this. I can't really tell if people are excited about C plus plus twenty. I know a lot of people care. I just can't bring myself to care about these standards. So like I, I care when features show up in compilers, but um, before then it's like. Doesn't really matter to me. Okay, I'm gonna say false or not reached. Right. Oh, yeah, and that's how the <laughs> Clang wanted it to look, so then we do it that way. Fine. Um, then what else do we need? Column metadata. G model. Um, tap, tap, tap. I forgot the name of what I was doing. I think for now we can just return an empty one here, but then we might want to customize some of the columns in a bit. But let's start out with an empty metadata. It's stuff like the which font to use and like if to what's the initial width of the column, stuff like that. Um, and then we have G variant. This is the really interesting one. Data. Uh, 
actually a row count. Column count. Oh yeah, we don't need to touch that. Data needs a model index and a role. Role is G model role display. Then switch. Um, oh, let's say uh, assert, or we shouldn't be here if the um, index is not valid, so let's just assume that it's valid. Um, auto region object, I guess, is um, process VM at index row. Uh, and then uh, as object. Okay. Now we have a JSON object here, the one that we created. So then we say auto, or no, we can just switch on the column actually. Do these. Boop. Uh, and then we just have to do region object dot get. Um, oh, just an object. Okay, excuse me. Uh, get address to string. Okay. Size, we want to do a little bit differently. Or no, actually, we can do it this way. Um, but I think for the address, we don't want to have it as a string now that I think about it. We want to do um, string format percent %p, something like that. Or maybe even like this, like it's like a zero x thing. Maybe that would be the best. Okay, and then here we'll just say region object I get readable to bool. Um, I guess yes or no might be good here. I'm not sure what would be a good format. We'll try this. And. Um, This one will do an int, so amount resident, and for name, that will be a string. Okay, so will this just work? I wonder. Wouldn't it be neat if this just worked on the first attempt? Um, so memory map widget, we want to make that model also, so. Table view set model process memory map model. Um, new process memory map model. Oh, and uh, we should set tell the model what his PID is, actually. So, we'll say... Um, and... Um, let's set PID, PID T. If mpid is pid, return mpid is pid, okay. Um, 
the course of file. We're going to need to read this thing in somehow. Um, and the path will be proc pid vm. Pid like that. If file open CI device read only. I will say something. Let's return. I'll do like a debug. I will to open file, file name. Yeah, cool. Um, and then mm, JSON is file read all. Um, JSON value from string. I haven't done this for a moment, but that's how you do it. Yep. Um, we'll assert JSON is not null. Actually, that should be an array. And we'll say m process vm is as array. And update, I guess. Wait, this feels like this should go an update. So maybe this is what we should do. And then we'll say, um, what is it called the base class? So gmodel update. What happens in gmodel update? Oh, it's pure virtual, right, right, right. So we just have to say did update. Boom. Um, oh, mpid, sorry about that. Mm, and we forgot to include that in the make file. Modal, okay. This feels kind of reasonable. Let's see where we forgot something. <clears throat> mm. Well, this is not very beautiful. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to uh, give these things some some initial um, width. Uh, this is so tricky. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, okay, that's not good. <laughs> um, that's the column metadata. Oh, they, they should really auto size themselves to a reasonable width at least. But I guess for now we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna do this here. So um, we have all of them here. So let's borrow that. Uh, and what is a column metadata exactly? It's um, width, text alignment, and font. Right. So let's say. 100 and nothing more. These can be smaller, so maybe 60, I guess. Matt resident will go back to 100 and name will say 200. But we didn't get any rows showing up, so that's not great. Um, Definitely will. Oh, but I guess no process was selected actually. So of course I'm not going to see anything. Did I forget to run? Yeah, I did. I mean, I forgot to rebuild. Um, maybe the sides should be right aligned. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, so now this is looking a bit more reasonable. Open this and we crash because the JSON is not an array. All right, that's fine. Hmm, what did we read then? JSON dot serialized, and we'll say return here. Or do this. 
I'm kind of curious what's in there. Maybe we should say something like this, actually. Just so we can recognize it. Proc pid VM. Well, there's definitely stuff in here. You're not an array. Wait, hold on. We were asserting there was not an array. Oh. <laughs> well, that didn't make any sense. So we were good. It was just the assertion was backwards. Right, right, right. All right, come on, buddy. Let's see some memory maps. Look at that. That's pretty freaking cool, no? So the address. Um, so immediately I can see that we should, let's tweak these um, default sizes a little bit, just because I, I like that kind of thing. So tweak this one to 80. Tweak this one to definitely down to like 60. Readable and writable. I guess we can leave those like that right now. Uh, amount resident can also be 60. Name can be 200, that's fine. But I think for, instead of yes and no, we'll say like R um, and nothing. And then we'll say write and nothing. Slow, I think that might be cool. Maybe we should merge those into a single one. I'm not sure. Um, we'll do like this right now and we'll see what we think. And I think we should also right align the size and the resident ones. Um, so that would be in the metadata, which is pass um, text alignment center right. That okay. I still have the stacks. Then should definitely merge these two. It's stupid to have them. Separately, I like the alignment change. Um, we should uh, put amount resident next to size, I think, and then we'll call this one access, access maybe access permissions. We'll call it access. Um, okay, and then. Just have to tweak this here. I'll call it access. Just tweak things around a little bit. Access. And then access. And then here we can do like this. And we'll say. String builder. Um, where did it go? Here. Um, if builder and R. This will be kind of neat. Builder to string. Okay. And then you go up here just because. Um, and then access can be way smaller also. Like 50 instead. Let's see how this looks. I have a good feeling about this one.
Oh, right, these kernel processes, they don't have any memory maps because they don't do allocate anything. Um, this looks pretty freaking cool. I tried to look at the Windows server and he gets upset. I don't know why, but he does. Um, I wonder why that is. Um, but it's just definitely not related to the GUI that I'm making. So, Let's see, she's looking if I can see something with a difference between resident and size somewhere. Um, audio server. It's always the same everywhere. What's it called? I guess we don't do a lot of like virtual memory allocation, uh, like a oversized, at least not yet. This one has like eight kilobytes virtual that are not represented um, as physical pages. I don't even know where they are. I guess I should be able to find them in this list. Where are you? They're not in the list. Where are they? Oh, wait, here they are, right here. It's the font that I'm using. Interesting. <laughs> so I guess the font is a, is a bit bigger, but we only ever used the first page of it. <laughs> Curious. Um, fine. It's nice that that's working at least. Um, well, I'm just browsing up and down because it's so cool. Uh, but. These PNGs here make sense. But why do we have all of these? Like undo, redo. That makes less sense. Why are you showing up here? Okay, this doesn't seem right, so let's investigate. Um fuck. Which pid was this? Ten. JP. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, JPVM, FGREP. Which one are we looking for? Delete. So it's definitely in there. Hmm. Why the heck is that? Icon mapped into this program. Uh, I don't have it here. I'm so confused. Um, oh, 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 wait, I know why. Because of the text editor widget. Right. So this here is a text editor widget that we use for the stacks. And when you create a text editor widget, he also creates like a bunch of the default actions. And each one of those actions has an icon associated with it. So we actually end up loading all these icons. I didn't realize that that was happening. But that's very nice that I was able to learn something immediately about my system by implementing this. Because this information was not like super accessible before, I guess. And now it's super duper accessible. Very cool. Uh, and yeah, it's in order here, so I think that's good. Anyways, I'm pretty freaking happy with this, so uh, I'll say let's commit this. Um, let's get rid of that system server hack that I did just to spawn the process manager on a startup. So application process manager, process memory map, um, CTP and H. And then we will look at the 
active against the head. Okay, so time for patch review. So just adding to the make file and then the process memory map model is, uh, let's look at the definition first, or the declaration first, actually. So it has these columns, address, size, amount, resident, access, and name. And then it's just a very simple, typical G model subclass that has a PID and a JSON array internally. Okay, and then when we set the PID, then we just update the PID variable and call update. And update, he will uh, slurp in the proc PID VM file and parse JSON into an array. And then just stash away that array in and process VM. And then here's all the um, G model business to get that working. And then here are the, um, the different call, uh, getting the data for the different um, indices. I think it ended up looking pretty good. Okay. Then here's the memory map widget. It's just a simple G widget um, with a vertical layout and some margins so that it looks nice with a table view inside it. That's a single widget and uh, we have a process memory map model in that widget. Uh, then we call it setPID from the main function here, which we just sort of pass forward to the um, setPID. And then we don't need to call update here because that's actually already being done uh, in setPID. So process memory map widget, uh, we don't need to do that. Because then I guess we were reading the JSON twice, so that's silly. Um, and then here's the declaration for the memory map widget. Very, very simple G widget um, subclass that really just has setPID as the only public interface other than the regular G widget stuff. And then, yeah, internally it has the table view. I think we don't, no, we have to keep it the table view pointer around so that we can find it down here in setPID, right? And finally, in process manager main, we just uh, create this memory map widget, add it to the tab, for the um, process specific views with the title memory map, and uh, that's it. And oh yeah, and then when you change the process, uh, the selected process in the process table uh, list there, then we also update the PID on the memory map widget. So that's the whole thing. That is the whole thing. Process manager. Um, add a um, memory map view to um, process VM layout. Um, I guess we can say like this. Uh, fetch uh, data from fetch all the data from proc pid vm for the selected process and show it in a nice g table view very cool okay so i think we're gonna see that one more time as <laughs> um, i'm actually super happy with this Okay, system server, nice and modest. Audio server, a little bit more going on, pass bar, a bunch more. But all in all, very, very cool. So that is just neat, just neat. Uh, <laughs> if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for coming here and hanging out with me as we continue to work on the Serenity operating system. I uh, hope you saw something interesting and I'll see you next time.